Hi, my name is Tyree Carter, and I want to talk a little bit about Melocartis and Melogortis Melson once again. So, here we go. Alright, well, last night I was watching an interesting program. Actually, it's one of my favorite podcasts, and they happen to be talking about the corruption and the uh, Disney company how all of their animations and their movies are based off of different um, practices that are ungodly and how there are hidden messages in these movies that um, are what's the word they are they are trying to, um, I guess they're trying to display characteristics of, like subliminally display characteristics of different worshiping practices. For example, one is they were talking about Aladdin, how there there is the, uh, the fine carpet. Well, they were suggesting maybe that the flying carpet, it will it, it could represent uh, astral projection. Projection. The carpet may be a like a praying carpet or a carpet for prayer, you know. And then it, it it flies, so you go off into like a whole new world. So it's like astral projection and different things such as that and these various movies they create well anyhow it reminded me um a little bit you know what i went through when i got into synchronism um so i i thought that you know synchronism is like a a school of thoughts put together to form uh, one big idea or different religions to um, that you can put different pieces of different different pieces and different religions put together to become its own practice so I was kind of into that for a moment and then um, I was I was uh, I strayed from Christ I was like a lost sheep so to speak which is a very good parable I love that parable I love the parables that, that Christ speaks of but anyhow um, so, at, I don't know if you've read the book, but there's a, um, a clock, and this clock, it basically just describes different, um, it doesn't describe, but it's like a working mechanism, and it's, it, um, as it works, it shows you different scripture value um experiences in the bible things such as that nature okay at first it was a display of different religions and then how they all sync they can are different things in different religions and how they all sync together and synchronize to um be held as this clock and it wasn't called the Deuteronomy Yoga Act Clock. It was called the uh, Yo the the I think the Deuteronomy Yoga Clock, right? Because um, I don't know. I had like a uh, fascination for women that do yoga or something. I don't know. Anyhow, um, so I begin to write my book. And of course, God uh, intervened, and then He, He, like I said, turned my um, my mess into a message. And He, what He did was He showed me, um, even before I read in Scripture, that these different practices and all these different things that are are um, held as normal in the society and culture we live in today really it's just like um stolen power from the almighty and it's being misused 
it's deceit. Um, it's just like repackaging and rebranding something and it's corrupted and it's of no good use. So what this device, the Deuteronomy Yoga Act Clock became was something that um, captures these spiritual, um, this is like a spiritual warfare, just like what's really going on. I try to be in exact correlation when I wrote this book, so I'm not uh, misguiding or being like a false prophet or anything, but it takes this deceit and then it takes this truth, its truth back out of the deceit in a very beautiful way, this clock is uh, very great. And I'll, by the way, I'm still selling abstract Deuteronomy Yoga clocks, and um, and I'm still looking for musicians and a ballerina, uh, maybe. So, just um, if you're digging, you know what I've been presenting to you. Just contact me, no problem. Um, so it's not secretism anymore at all. It's um, it's, and I didn't really have to, which is beautiful, I didn't really have to change anything too much. It's just that instead of it being about that, it's the same, but it's just pointing out these different religions that are misguiding. And it's not to um, to condemn or, or send anyone into damnation. It's basically to interrupt and stay connected to these sinners, just like Christ put himself around sinners I don't know if he was connected to them um, but and and show them what that's power is really coming from to show that he loves you and you don't have to to um, to follow him but you know he's not forcing you but he's showing you what that's this what it's really what's what things are really um, supposed to be like and what's what they're really supposed to to worship so they could um turn their backs on sin and start to follow him and realize that the deceit is unnecessary and what all they really need is the truth and um from there just to progress and move further and further away from sin until they're completely in the right belief system which is my belief is Christianity with Christ the Father um, so that's how that and in watching that podcast it just really tripped me out because it, when I was writing this book it kind of led me in this direction that I went as well uh, I was already in the direction but I know God was definitely with me because he he um, just put me in the right element to where I could be researching and, and just being able to follow a path meant for my, um, meant for my, whatever it's going to be. I'm just trusting God and I always trust God. So I wanted to talk about that. So I just did. And um, another thing is I wanted to talk a little bit about how... Um, Satan started attacking me when I, I wrote this book. I know when I was much more in sin that he um, attacked me, but whenever I would sin, it was like he wouldn't, he would just let me. And now it's he's angry, so he attacks me while I'm trying to do good, and then he tries to make me succumb to sin since he, he knows I can fall to it because I was once entrapped in, in his sin so I try and stay in prayer and and if he does get me to succumb to sin it's no good out of it you know it's just complete as a as if you know ha you can't escape me type of thing so it's just the devil is nothing to play with and he does not want any um he doesn't want any anything you know he he doesn't love you and he'll never love you and um you know just realize that god loves you and stay in the faith and um 
just stay prayed up. And I realize, and I know it says in the Bible that, you know, there's nothing you could do to, um, to get God to, you know, um, make you anything or send you anywhere. Um, it's all, it's all his mercy. What I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, I, I wrote this book and all that, but it was, I feel like it was just a gift. And really, all I really need is, you know, just prayer to stay in prayer because the only answer is Christ. And, um, but I'm very glad that I was able to do this because it's really just to try and, it's my way of leading people in the right direction because honestly, I'm a very quiet person and I just want to thank God for, um, giving me this outlet so that I could participate and grow as a person and at least, you know, speak the word, my truth to people on the internet at least and, you know, just grow from there. Um, so yeah, he, he, uh, Satan, you know, he started attacking me, um, especially when I started writing about the mark in the beast and, you know, he definitely mocked that and, uh, got upset. Just, I'm a very spiritual person. I, I know. I know when uh, I've seen many things, you know, um, as far as spirituality, I've seen beauty, you know, I've seen, I felt God's presence. I know his presence in my life and I know he doesn't give me too much that I can't handle. I know he's in complete control and that's I always keep the faith up or down, you know, so um I guess I won't get into too too much details, but we all know what evil looks like, and we know how Satan likes to mock and to try and convince you that you haven't accomplished anything, even if there's a trophy right in front of your face. But um, let's see. I think there is one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, well, that's it. So I just want to say, have a great day, and by that, God bless you. One more thing. Um, I wanted to mention one more thing right quick. I'm advertising Melicartis and Melodorcus medicine right now on Facebook. And I am getting a lot of likes from people in Lebanon, which I think is beautiful because, you know, Melicartis is a Phoenician word. And I'm not getting many likes from people in the States. And I'm okay with that because I think that it is um, it's supposed to be that way. I mean, I would love to get support from my hometown. And I do have a, I mean, my my home country. But uh, I do have a lot of, uh, a few likes from Americans. But, you know, I think it's cool because I don't know if you watch my vlog about Tyre Mella Carter. The rapper who pertained to Phoenician culture, and I thought maybe it was gonna lead to me like I, I used to. Well, he used to want to move to Lebanon and um, be like a Lebanese rapper with Lebanese people, and of course my direction changed because God stepped in, or his direction changed because God stepped in and my book is still has a lot of um, references and it talks about Lebanon but it's uh, not the same thing at all so I'm wondering you know I think it's very interesting that I'm getting a lot of likes from that area and uh, I'm very sorry about what's happening you know what's going on in the Gaza Strip South Lebanon right now and uh, I hope this book sends a lot of warmth and love to that region and I would I am looking forward to you know finding out what's, what's really what this connection really is and uh, that's all I wanted to mention all right God bless